On our next painting and travel, Sarah continues to explore the Tennessee farm, while Roger uses acrylics and explains techniques to put the finishing touches on the painting of that red dairy barn and surrounding mountains. One of my very favorite states to explore is Tennessee, and I love East Tennessee because it's full of old structures, old barns of every description and color. On our fall trip to Eastern Tennessee, in search of old weathered structures for subjects to paint, we found a red dairy barn, which Roger began to paint in part one. Today, Roger will complete the second half of his painting after showing you a step-by-step -step recap from the previous episode. The painting began with an 11 by 14 inch piece of masonite covered with gesso and charcoal was used on its side to lay in the large broad areas of the composition. My palette consisted of titanium white, alizarin crimson, Indian yellow and ultramarine blue. These are of course three primary colors. I began by laying in the sky with a large 3 quarter inch brush then proceeded down to the barn. My goal here was to get all the areas covered in a big way before any refinements were made. The mountains in the middle ground had more color in them and I picked up the three colors on my brush from my palette without mixing them very much. That helped to give the fall look of varied colored leaves. The foreground was painted and no white was used at this point as I wanted to start with my darks and work toward the lights. So I made the grass darker than I knew it would eventually become. After I finished covering the entire board, refinements could then begin, but these first few steps helped to establish how everything else would go down. Take this dark color once again, with all three of my primary colors, and uh, we have a couple of small windows down here. Well, I like how these windows are sort of unevenly spaced. It makes it very interesting, as opposed to having them evenly spaced across here. We've got one here and then two, so it makes a nice nice pattern. This is totally dry now, so I can take this paint and use my paints as a glaze. And I'm going to put that on the bottom here. I want these two areas here to be almost nondescript. I want this this structure here just to blend in right with the with the earth below it. heard such verbal animals as those cows in the barn. Back here, this is much lighter. Remember I said I was going to put these dark greens in here just so I could put the lighter greens over them? So that's what I'm going to do. I'll take my Indian yellow, some white, and ultramarine blue. I'll spray my board. Now we'll put in some of these flat, light areas. These flat areas will give sort of a nice resting place for the eye amongst all this other texture. We have one, another field coming down here. They just sort of crisscross. And maybe we'll put another one right up in here. I'm going to use my fan brush now. Fan brushes are just excellent for putting in weeds and small brush. So I'll we'll take this same color that's right about here and we'll just flip this up over these dark colors. That way these dark colors can remain on the canvas and show through. Now if I didn't have that dark area, this dark green underneath, I wouldn't be able to do this quite so easily. And all this texture is going to pay off now because as I just flip up some of these greens in here. I get a combination of this texture here, which is already dry, 
and these lighter color greens that I'm putting on top of it. So I'm sort of layering this. Now I'm going to make this grass up towards the foreground more intense. I'm going to grab one more color, and this is an opaque color, cadmium yellow. I'm going to put that beside this. I think I'll put out some more Indian yellow too while I'm at it. So this is an opaque color, this is a transparent color. So this combination of blue and yellow will give me a very brilliant green here. And that's what I want in the foreground. As a general rule, colors in the foreground are going to be more intense, and more vivid than colors in the background. Okay, so I'll just flip this up with my fan brush. A squirt of water always helps to make this paint flow easily. Here I can just sort of have fun putting patches of grass here and there, vary the color here. I'm making it somewhat warmer, a little bit, a little bit orange color. There may be fall leaves that dropped on the ground. Maybe that's what's making this as warm as it is. And with this red barn here, it's very nice to have a lot of other reds around it. It just ties all the colors into the barn. And a barn like this is also going to reflect some shades of red right down here at the base of it too. So maybe I'll just take some more red and blue and we'll just add some more shadows down there, almost with this same color red. We'll take a, another dark color and add it right along the edge of this pond where there's some larger weeds growing up. Make that kind of a green color. I use my brush in all sorts of angles. I don't always use my brush straight on. Sometimes I use it sideways. Sometimes I hold it like this just to give a variation of brush strokes. I don't want all my brush strokes to look, look the same. There, right down there by the edge of the water. Right back here, I'll lighten this color. And we've got a hedgerow or something right back in here. Put that in. Well, I think it's time to start focusing in on some of the details. So I'll take a couple of smaller brushes here and we'll start adding some of those features, which is always kind of a fun part of it. But I have to get this basics down first. All right, right up here, I can see to the other side of the barn. So I'll put that spot of light there coming in from the other side. It comes down, just see some of that right there. Before I go any further, I'm looking and I'm noticing that this, the value of this grass is still too dark. I need to lighten it more. So I think I'll do that right now. There's a lot of things to think about when painting. It's, you know, you've got the drawing, you've got the values, you've got the color. It's very easy to miss something and uh, miss critical things as, as the painting progresses. That's why you, I have to keep looking at the subject constantly because there's so much information there that what the artist has to do is simplify that in such a way as to make a pleasing painting. We can't put in everything, it's just impossible. And if I were to try and put in everything, I think the painting would suffer some anyway. Uh, this is more of a, a feeling of the subject, not so much, uh, you know, I don't want to end up with a photograph here but I want this to have a nice painterly feeling to it. So I have to take all these shapes and colors and simplify them quite a bit. And it's not always easy seeing it that way. It's, uh, we see it in such a complex way and uh, to simplify it as much as it needs to be is, is a bit of a trick. I'm looking at the values of the grass and the values of the mountain and they're about the same value. The warmer colors 
will tend to look lighter than cooler colors, even if they're even if they are the same value. Okay, let's get back to some of the detail. Right here we have a division where the boards stop and a new layer begins, and also we have one here. So we have kind of three layers of this barn. I don't want to get these very light because then I'm going to lose the silhouette effect of this. Yeah, I'll put a few more strokes of this light, lighter color in here. Maybe also down in here, put a few. Now we'll take a dark color again with the ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. And we'll put this uh, shadow under these eaves right here. Very, very dark color. And this eave cuts in right here. As it goes back, I'll do the same here. Now I'm going to lighten some of these areas, probably lighter than what I see them, but I have to push this somewhat in order for these details to show up. So here's where that row of boards ends. And I'll just indicate where some of those come down and hit this edge. These are very weathered boards, so they tend to be very kind of gray. I'll take the same color. We'll go down to this next layer here, and a few more. We'll put a few here. Now I can see the edge of this building here, and the light is hitting it, and so it's a warm color. I'm going to mix some Indian yellow with this gray I've got here. And since I can see the edge of that building, We'll drop that right in there. Right in here is going to be the shadow. Now we, but we can also put this light coming across the roof. So we just see a small sliver of that roof line right there. Tiny bit of light catching the edge here of this eave. We'll put a bit of that in. This will start to express some detail in this painting. With some white, I can take and maybe strike a line right down the edge of the roof of this large barn. I'll do that on this other side as well. It's very nice working with so few colors, I find. It's a, it gives me all I need and yet I'm not confused with a lot of different choices, especially some of the colors that are on the market today that are, uh, are sort of odd colors, you know, fuchsia and mauve and I don't know what all, but uh, you know, those colors I really stay away from. I try and use the basic, basic colors. Most of those other type colors too have so much white in them that they're not too useful, at least for me. Right here, let me put this, that's the very edge of that house. Down here, this is more of a cement look. So I'll stay with this basic color here and I'll just lighten that a little bit. Right in here, goes right up to the window, so right across the flat there. And that's why I say about adjusting these colors, it, you have, they have to be adjusted all the time as the painting progresses. Uh, I find very few painters can hit the exact color right on the mark to begin with. It's always a, a, a situation where colors are constantly being adjusted and updated. Now we've got a dark color right under the eave here. The painting's starting to come to life a little bit more, but I'm glad I took as much time as I did with getting the big shapes and the basic areas in as best I could. Put a nice bright highlight right on the edge of this roof here. And we'll take that same highlight we've used for some of these areas here. We'll put it across this roof there. We have some nice dark fence posts coming down here from the barn. I'll put in a few of those 
And I have more fence posts in the front. I'm going to grab my fan brush once again because there's some foliage growing up on the side of the building. So I'll mix up a kind of a warm green and we'll just put it right up the side here. Now things like ponds and lakes can offer a nice opportunity to uh, show reflections. So if we have these uh, posts here, it might be nice just to show a small reflection right there. Just indicates that there's some water there. Helps describe that more. I feel this needs more interest in here. So there's a field down there that looks like it's plowed. And that's a good chance to put in a nice light patch back in here. I've picked up a tube of cadmium red light. Now this is an opaque color as well. I don't need much of that, but I'm putting some of that out on my palette just to put a few touches of brighter red on the barn. Put those right down in here. Well, I'm going to take some photographs and details of this barn and I think I've got enough information here, so let's take it back into the studio, along with the information on this painting, the color choices, and the photographs. We'll finish it up there. Well, here in the studio, I have a chance to make some changes that weren't really practical out in the field. I can spend more time with it here and consider more of it because the light's not changing and I have some better conditions. I'll use the photographs I took in the field which include not only the general shot of the area but some details so I'll have some good reference to start with. I have added a few more colors to my palette. I have my original colors that I had out in the field which were Indian yellow, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson. These are transparent colors, but now I've added a set of opaque colors. Cadmium yellow light, cerulean blue, and cadmium red light. I use the transparent colors in the field, especially to start a painting because they give me a rich, dark color. But if I use too many of the opaque colors in the field, the painting tends to get chalky because these opaque colors have white in them. So I use those a bit sparingly to start with. The other thing that always surprises me is that when I get the painting back in the studio, the painting looks much darker than it does when I'm out in the field painting. And that's because it's so bright outside, these paintings tend to look lighter. When I bring it back into the studio, the painting always looks darker. So I think I'll have to lighten up portions of this. Well, I'll get started and I think I'll begin up here with these mountains. I'm going to mix the color of the sky again because I want this edge right here to be very soft. And the only way to do that, especially with acrylics, since this is dry, is to repaint the sky again. I mean, I think that's the easiest way for me to accomplish that. Then while this is still wet, and it will only be wet for a couple of minutes, I'll be able to blend the top of this ridge in with the mountains to get a nice soft edge that I'm looking for. So I'll put this paint on rather thick. This dries very fast, so I don't think I'll even bother with this part of the sky yet. I'll just keep this very wet and thick down here. I'll wash the brush out and I'll take some of the, my cerulean blue and white Maybe a touch of red and I'll, and I'll paint a stripe of this blue color right on the ridge. So now while that's still wet, I'll wipe my brush off so I'll have a dry brush and I can blend these two colors together. Now I only have a couple of minutes to do that. If this were oils, it would be a different situation, but with the acrylics to get that nice soft edge, I'm going to do it this way. Now I still have my two piles of paint here, one for the sky, one for the mountains. So if I need to keep working on this for a few moments, I can go back, pick up my mountain color here, wipe my brush off a bit, and I can pick the sky color up. 
so I can get a good soft, soft edge right there. Now I'll take this sky color and I'll just bring this down with some vertical strokes just so that edge is not quite so smooth. That might indicate a few of the trees that are on the ridge. Maybe give it a more painterly look. Just drag those right into that sky. I'll just drag those right into that mountain. Now I'll mix some more of my sky color. Since I have that blended already, I can mix the sky color and finish painting the sky. These are still wet here, some, so I'll just sort of aggressively blend those together. There, now I have a nice soft edge here and I can move on to something else. The barn just looks too dull to me. Even though it was dull, dark, and in shadow, I'm going to lighten this. I've taken my cadmium red light and just thinned it out, I'm putting this over as a wash. So since cadmium red light is an opaque color, it's going to start to cover this quite well. I have to be careful not to use too much of this as a wash or it may start to look chalky. So I'm approaching this carefully. I'm using my vertical strokes here to indicate the boards on the side of the barn. I've got a fairly large brush here. This is a flat, but it has a nice chisel point on it. It hasn't been used too much, so I can get a nice sharp edge right up here where I start. And while I'm at it, I'll lighten this small shed right here. I'm going to accentuate some of the boards right in here. I know I need to work on these mountains back in this area as well, but I might not need to work on those nearly as much. If I add the detail here, I may find that other areas don't need attention that I think might need attention. So I'll add the important parts now, which might be the boards on the side of this barn, which is the center of interest. I'll use my cadmium red light and some white, and with a small brush, start adding some detail. Adding details out in the field is difficult for me, so a studio work like this and finishing up a painting in the studio is, is important. That way I can kind of leave nature out in the field and concentrate mainly on the painting and how it looks and not worry too much about being true to nature. At this point, I want to be true to the painting more than I do want to be true to, to nature. In other words, what looks good in the painting is what's important because I'm not trying to create a photograph here. I'm trying to create a feeling of what I saw and felt out there. I don't want to put in every board, but just indicate some boards here and there. If I were to indicate every single board, I think it would just be too much. It would sort of destroy the feeling of the painting, and it's really quite unnecessary to, to paint every single board. So we'll just suggest some here and there. I'll take my alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and make a very dark red and accentuate a few of the boards that may be casting a shadow right on this level right here. Now I'll drag a few areas right down this way, and I think that's probably enough. I'll pick up some white and Indian yellow to make a, a warm, light color, and I'll lighten these boards that run along the top of the roof right here. Well, let's put a small indication that there might be some hay up there. Well, now we'll move down to that smaller structure, which was the milking barn, and we'll add some details to that to bring it out a bit more. The sun was coming in from this way, so the bright side of this structure was right here, and I'll lighten the roof as well. I'll bring that light color right down in here. Now, as I look at my reference photograph, the top part of this was made out of wood, similar to the barn here, but the bottom part is made out of cement block. I'll take a few more vertical strokes and indicate a few more of these boards right in here. Here I'll use a grayish color here, sort of a neutral color, and somewhat warm and 
I'll add uh, these window frames. There isn't too much going on with these window frames, but I may add just a few more window panes in here. Then we're actually on the structure itself. Add a few right in here. A highlight right down here, the bottom where the window sill is. Put that in. I'll take my three transparent colors here, make a very dark color, and put a hint of shadow right under where these boards are. These are the boards here, and this is the concrete. There's no light catching the small bush or tree that's growing up here, but I'm going to make this somewhat greener. It's very dark in the photograph. I'm going to add some lighter shades down here. To finish the painting, I added some subtle details in the interior of this barn. There was a dead looking tree over here next to the barn. and I debated whether to put that in or not, so I finally added that. I felt it needed some more life in the painting, so I placed a few cows here in the field. I also added some sparkle to the edge of this pond. And to finish it off, I added a few more of these cow paths right down in here, and that kind of led my eye into the scene. It can be difficult to know when you're finished with a painting. You just have to stop somewhere. The last brushstroke on the final cow path was when I felt the painting was complete. Here's one last look at the Red Dairy Barn. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.